Um, well, I don't know how I'm going to follow a green parrot and a genie, so I'm going to try. Really going to try. Um, I said, well, okay, my name is John Kelly, I'm here from Atlantic Language, and we're going to talk about um, our experience with the uh, Brazilian CAPIS program and um, also the, the TOEFL course that we had to put together for these. Uh, before I go any further, um, I'd like to say that this was a. Um, well, it wasn't just myself to put this, this talk together. There was um, Gigi Rousseau, who's our academic manager, who's here today. Okay, she was involved in this as well. And uh, also, uh, Rogin Walsh, who's our director of studies, who was dying to be here today. <laughs> and unfortunately, she, we have the, well, fortunately, we have the Cambridge exams today. And uh, so she's not here. But anyway, um, so just, um, well, so just to give you an idea, um, what my presentation is, uh, is basically, uh, well, organized as follows. First of all, we're going to have a look at the background of, of what, the, what is the CAPES program from, from Brazil, uh, but a very quick look at that. Then we're going to have a look at the, um, an overview of the TOEFL course that we had to put together um, for these students. Uh, then we're going to have a look at the challenges and solutions and what was the outcomes for this for Atlantic Language um, Galway. And it has been a significant project for us over the last year. Uh, and then we're going to have a look at, again at some of the reflections and conclusions from this. Um, first of all, the CAPES program was set up at the, um, at the end of the 1950s, early 1960s in Brazil. It's basically, um, well, I'd say, a, I'd say a training betterment program for professionals um, from Brazil. Um, the part we're looking at is the Science Without Borders uh, program, which I'm sure some of you have heard about. Uh, it's basically a mobility program for, um, for people from within the science, sciences community in, in Brazil to go overseas, have experience, and uh, go back home and be able to implement new ideas and maybe fresh forms of thinking back home in Brazil. Um, so let's have a look at the, uh, the profile of a, a typical um, <coughs> CAPE student. Um, at the moment, there are about 1,400 uh, CAPE program students or um, Science Without Borders students here in Ireland. Um, I am one of them. Yes, you've got one. We've actually got, we've actually got one here. We weren't expecting that, actually. No, so that's good. So we actually have a live one here. Um, so, uh, well, let's have a look now. Okay, so let's hope this is good. <laughs> All right. So the profile of a, a typical CAPE student. Now, this, is, again, is from our interpretation and um, from this. Um, well, let's have a look. So we have, uh, basically, science engineering background, also uh, medicine and mathematics in there as well. The medicines um, also includes dentistry. Um, 20 to 30 years old, uh, usually. Uh, the ones, at least the ones we've had in Atlantic language, anyway. Um, middle class, usually. Uh, urban, uh, mostly from large cities and uh, quite large towns in, in comparison to Ireland. Um, again, from all over Brazil. Um, the, one of the first exercises we do with, with the students is just to we call up a map of Brazil on the, on the interactive whiteboards and we ask them to show us where they're from. Absolutely just flabbergasting sometimes the distances that are between students. We've had 3,000 kilometres between one and in our, one of our courses in January, there was three thousand kilometers between, okay, two of our students from right up on the in the north uh, north well, eastern corner to right down into the to, to the border with Argentina. It was incredible. Um, now, uh, the English level in A two to B one initial English level when they come in actually quite high for students in comparison. We found with the European <coughs> students. Um, you know, for they hadn't really studied for three or four years while at university, and when they come in, it is actually um, incredible how fast they improve. Um, it, it's one of the things that, that sort of really surprised us when the students come in. Um, now, react positively to challenges, extremely positively, actually. Um, one of the few things that you will never hear as any complaints, mm -hmm. and we have loaded these students with work as part of the course. Um, again, uh, conscientious, extremely conscientious in how the work is done, um, in, incredibly so. We've actually learned quite a lot um, as regards, you know, sometimes how underachieving sometimes some students are in comparison to these students. Um, also, balanced, amenable, and appreciative. Um, our end-of-course parties or end-of-course classes are probably some of the most memorable that I've ever had from the students, mm -hmm. to be perfectly honest with you. Um, it's, it's, you are genuinely sorry when these courses finish. Um, the good news is that there's another group waiting to come in, so we're actually, it's actually great. And um, then, sense of humour, incredibly um, important in, in any class, and in these classes especially so. Now, um, the Irish connection to all of this was started about uh, three years ago with um, trade missions to Brazil. Um, the agreements were signed uh, to bring students over here. Uh, then there were partnerships that were set up with institutions here in Ireland. Uh, we've got the University of Limerick here, we have INUI Galway. Uh, DIT, RSA, and UCC, and amongst others, uh, to basically cater for these students into in 
in the sense of they, they come in for three, six months, um, nine months or a year of actual study in, in the university. They're mostly undergraduates, although there have been masters and doctors people have come over as well, but they've gone directly into their programs and they haven't come through any of the uh, language courses. Um, our connection with, with this is through, is through um, in UI. We were approached by in UI uh, going to, they felt that they, some of their students needed language support. So they came to us at Atlantic Language Galway to see what, what um, could we implement um, a, a TOEFL course. That's what they had specified, and we said yes. And, um, and then the students started to come to us. Now, I'd just like to add that this came as a hell of a surprise. If somebody said to me this time, exactly this date last year, that I'd be standing here in front of you talking about TOEFL, I would say there's no way. Because we, had, we, hadn't, we had never done TOEFL at Atlantic Language before. Never. And suddenly, uh, we had four weeks literally four weeks um, warning or notice to get this up and running we were expecting 20 students to come in and we had to get a we had to get a brochure we had to get literally uh, a curriculum and materials get the books and everything together and uh, we knew that we were have we had 20 students coming um, on the on the monday and we had to get get moving on this really really quickly so it really was one of the most intensive projects that we worked on and uh, that of course right in the middle of our normal summer um, curriculum, as I'm sure you all know yourselves, this was right in the middle of July, and this was the middle of June. Um, we were all expecting a typical intensive CAEs, FCEs, and then suddenly, here you go guys, off you go, and see what you can do with that. Um, so, let's have a look then, um, talking about the TOEFL exam, the, the TOEFL exam was specified by um, in, in UIG, uh, because through the CAPIS program, that's how the students are selected to come over here as regards their, their English level. Um, so they wanted... Um, a, a program that involved TOEFL in some way so that they could, basically to, for equivalency scores to IELTS, so that they could know exactly what level the students had. Um, so that's, we ended up then using um, basically what was the, the IBT, um, the TOEFL IBT, which was an internet-based exam, but uh, without the component of actually doing the exam on, online for lots of different logistical and technical reasons as well. So let's have a look at the TOEFL exam, for maybe for people who are not familiar with what the TOEFL exam is. Um, it, it's basically an American exam, first of all, it, um, it's based around American English and American uh, vocabulary, uh, which, which is a little bit unusual for us then here because we're so used to the Cambridge exams and then suddenly we have to make this switch over. But it didn't prove to be, it didn't prove to be such a challenge really, um, you think about it. There are certain uh, vocabulary, it was more the, it was more the uh, layout of the exam itself that was, uh, was challenging for us. Uh, so basically it's the idea of the, the, the exam, it's actually a very practical exam. Uh, in the sense of it tests the effective communication of ideas, focuses on use of language as opposed to knowledge. Not really, not really interested, the, the exam is not really interested in how much you know, it's basically what you know and how you're able to apply that. Um, simulates, uh, simulates academic and student life communication. All the elements of the exam mm -hmm. basically are, are based around on campus. You have interactions with lectures, uh, you have interactions between students, and uh, then you have tutorials, things like that. Now, um, what were our objectives then? Our objectives were obviously to increase the learner's general language skills. This was what um, in UI had, um, or in, in UIG had, had requested. Um, and our, our focus on this was, yes, in UIG had said, okay, right, we do the TOEFL exam. But when we sat down to talk about this, and we're trying to get this together, we said, well, look, that's not really the main objective here at all. It is in the sense that, um, that the student had to pass the, the, t the test for in UIG. But we were thinking, hold on for a second here, what's going to happen to these guys in September when they are suddenly, uh, they have like two months with, that's with us and suddenly they're into classes with Irish people, Irish lecturers. So when we put the course together, um, we looked at this, not just getting them to pass the TOEFL exam, but to see how helpful could we be, how, what tools could we give them to really, you know, th th this wasn't abstract. It wasn't like a Cambridge exam, so maybe somebody's going to use this in the future. We knew that we, uh, these students were going to be sitting down at lectures in the UIG in September. So that meant it a hell of a lot more real to us. And so we, we incorporated that into um, the program. Um, we had to uh, prepare the learners for the uh, TOEFL IBT, okay, which was a modified version of it, as, uh, as I said, in the sense that they, we, they had to do an exam. We had to get the, put the exam together ourselves also, um, basing it on the, the TOEFL IBT exam, which we said was a computer-based exam, but, in, in, but it was but modified in the sense it was going to be on paper. Um, ensure learners obtain a minimum of 80 out of 120 TOEFL IBT score. That's what, um, that's what in UIG was basically asked us to do. Now, um, we have been very successful at that. 
Um, all of our students have passed. Um, if you've watched NUIG, they have been incredibly happy with that. Uh, one or two borderlines, but most of them actually with excellent results, uh, surprisingly good results in some cases. For the, the type of exam, it is quite a challenging exam. Uh, provide, there was also the cultural exchange element uh, in the sense of here we have literally people getting off an airplane on a Saturday and coming in, their first contact with Ireland is probably through the teacher. And this was actually, we, we sort of realised this very quickly, that you know, we had a hell of a responsibility here that um, they were going to be three, they literally arrive on the Saturday, you know, go to their host families on the sun, Sunday, um, and they're into us on the Monday morning. And this is their first real contact with Ireland, with any English-speaking country in, in lots of cases, with us. So there was that cultural exchange element, and, and um, we, we sort of realised that very quickly, that what we were doing was incredibly important, uh, in that sense, to the students themselves. Uh, now... So let's have a look then. This was our July 2013 trial run. Um, these were, uh, I think, 19 students in total. We've got Gigi here and myself. Uh, these were mostly doctors, dentists. We had three physicists. Uh, incredibly good students and very clever and very challenging. Um, probably one of the, the most challenging groups of people that I've ever had to be in there with, or even Gigi as well, in the sense of these guys didn't let you get away with anything. <laughs> I remember one day making the mistake of just saying something as, a, as an offhand comment, okay, out came the phones, and <laughs> next minute I was being quoted a Danish research paper on something. <laughs> right, guys, thanks. Okay, yeah, literally, I think, and this was it. And that's how challenging it was, and uh, they were really good people, and uh, very formative experience for us in the sense that we realized, oh my God, you know, th these are the people we're dealing with now. So uh, one of the things was that we've, um, at that we realised very early was that we really had to up our game, really had to do it um, because we were dealing with very, very special students here. Now, okay, so moving on, this was the, uh, the influx, the first influx of over 100 students into NUIG then in September. Okay, the, uh, we'll be coming back to this a little bit later. Now, um, so challenges for learners. Now, so um, in the sense is, well, it's okay talking about us, but what about the students? Uh, what, what was their, you know, what challenges were they facing? Well, obviously, um, enhanced speaking skills was incredibly important. They, a lot of the students did not have, um, or had not had contact with English, in, as, as spoken English. Uh, reading, yes, but spoken English, no, in maybe for two or three or maybe four years before they came to Ireland. So they were good, they had a really good level, but they were missing some of the, the, the flexibility sometimes with higher level structures and things like that. Now, next one, um, we obviously increased academic vocabulary, a huge academic load, uh, loading of vocabulary on this. As part of the TOEFL itself, just the nature of the exam, the very American-based uh, college-type exam, but also just for general, we, we had to make sure that we were filling in all of the spaces for the students. As I said, our approach to this was, okay, the TOEFL on one side, but the students first on this. We had to make sure that they were completely covered as regards their vocab. And we, um, a very intensive part of our program was, was the vocab, the focus on the vocab. Now, um, improved writing skills. Uh, again, writing skills, pretty obvious. These guys were going to be, um, not just for note-taking, but they were going to have to produce papers and, in at NUIG, or even in the future as well. Uh, essays, you name it. So uh, they needed quite a lot of work on that. Um, Fine-tune and uh, listening comprehension. Again, they needed those, those reflexes for listening. Uh, obviously for lectures. In your inside the lectures. And, and then note-taking connected in with that as well. Uh, now, what about the challenges for the tutors? Okay, let's back up. What did we face? This was the, this was the interesting bit as well. Um, well, first of all, we had to adapt the TOEFL IBT exam to NUIG's requirements. That was the first thing we had to do. We had to make sure that the students passed the NUIG requirements, okay? Uh, all the time we were expecting an inspection from cafes. or we, we, Well, one of the things was we assumed we were going to be inspected in some way. So we were expecting somebody to arrive in at the school someday from um, the Brazilian, let's say, the, the consulate in Dublin or the embassy, whatever, and say, okay, I'm here from cafes, we're here to see what you're doing. So that was one of the first things we decided. Okay, what happens if we're going to be inspected by somebody from Brazil or even from NUIG? So we always said in the sense of, okay, let's make sure we're doing a really good job on this. Um, Develops uh, TOEFL specific work practices. Now, I'll come back to that a little bit later. Uh, one of the things we discovered was this was not the CA and this was not the FC. This was not take a book and walk into the classroom and have a nice cushy 12 weeks. All right? That didn't happen. We had no material. We had to put the course together ourselves, mm -hmm. and this was one of the most intensive parts of this. We had to invent, put this whole course together ourselves. There was nothing there for us, uh, in, and in a very short time. Now, um, as I said, we, we have been working on this over a year now. Now we have a really solid course on this, but it, it did take a hell of a lot of work. 
Um, deal with single nationality tests. This was something unusual for us as well. We have quite a, a, a diverse student, um, let's say, population at, at uh, Atlantic Language Galway. But suddenly, you went from you know having two or three Saudis, the Spanish, Italians, whatever in the class, and then suddenly you have twelve Brazilians. And uh oh, hold on, this was this was change. Okay, there was the, that was quite unusual when we saw that first. Um, now, not that not unusual in the Bible, but it was it was in the sense that you didn't have this sort of diversity that you had sometimes inside in the class. Um, now, continuously challenge and motivate. We were talking about really, really good people here. Um, quite brilliant in some cases. We had three of our physicists, okay, and mathematicians, who kept us on our toes on the first one. Uh, we had, for example, um, Jefferson, for example, who was one of the, um, from Salvador, who was probably one of the most brilliant people that, that I've ever come across in the class. Um, and, I mean, if you even mentioned the mathematics or astronomy or something, Okay, you, you had to be absolutely sure you were, you know, you were, because he was able to hold a conversation with almost anybody on this. Now, um, keep it interesting, this was another thing as well. We had these guys for three hours every morning, and we had to make absolutely sure that, that they were in there, that they were, they were working, they were challenged all the time, and also in a very in an interesting way. Um, also, we had the personal crisis. We were talking about groups of young people a long way from home, and... As the course progressed, we began to see, you know, the, the little problems began to arise. Long-term relationships. Some people had left, were trying to continue relationships that had left back home. Boyfriends, girlfriends were left at home. There were breakups. There were medical emergencies. There were financial emergencies. Um, there, there were, there are, what am I saying? There's a leer. Okay, there were, um, there were all sorts of these things. Uh, one of the most interesting cases, again, back to my, my good friend Jefferson. Jefferson's cycling down the Dublin Road in Galway one night. Okay, gets sideswiped by a taxi, gets thrown about literally 15 meters through the air and lands up in the forecourt of the G Hotel <laughs> on his head. Ends up in hospital. Okay, two days later, he's back on crutches in class. Uh, black and blue on one side of his body, not seriously hurt. Lost his bike, lost his bag, lost his phone, of course. Um, and, but he's back in class two days later. Like this. So just to show you the sort of people we're talking about here. Now, and, uh, and these were just uh, some of the things that we've come across. Not, nothing, but nothing major. Now, let's just see, what sorts of solutions? This is probably something that might be useful to you guys, okay? The, the rest of the story, okay, but this, let's see if you can take some of this away with you. Um, first of all, it was an extensive in-depth grammar revision, which I'm sure you could all was more or less predictable in the sense that they, did, they needed higher level structures that they didn't really have, and we had to work quite, um, quite a lot on those. Uh, mapping of persistent. This was one of the biggest challenges we had. We discovered in the first one or two courses we ran, we had trouble <laughs> trying to basically correct errors. Um, they, they didn't seem, there were some very simple little errors that would, were being repeated again and again and again. We had to basically stop and look at this and say, how, what can we do about this? We had to make out specific correction sheets for each, for each exercise. Uh, we had to note down their errors, we had to photocopy these, get them back to the students, analyze them in class every single, uh, every single day, really. And it was probably the most intensive corrections that I've ever had to do. I've never had to, even for Ed Cambridge Advanced, I've never had to do this, uh, in the sense we had to go through all of these to try and Im to improve their writing levels. Um, intensive real-world reading from a variety of sources. Um, we had to use real material. Now, the advantage of this was that they were actually re reading real material back home and textbooks, in, in some cases, in English. But we were taking, for example, from Wired magazine, New Scientist, okay, full articles from this. These guys were going home, reading these um, over the weekends, uh, producing summaries, uh, vocabulary reports, and back in on Monday morning. On the rare occasion, this wasn't done. Now, I'm talking about seven or eight page um, articles from Wired magazine, which would be challenging even for any of us to do the same amount of work. There was no complaining. They were back in on the Monday morning and every single thing you asked these people to do. Like, the first, the first, first course, we were sort of surprised that people were doing this. The next course, then we began to realize, hold on, we can actually start loading these guys up more and more. It was always done. It was incredible. I've, I mean, even, you know, some of the work I would have sort of said to, said to myself, oh my God, if I had to do this for the weekend, uh, they were able to do it. Um, okay, extensive use of mind mapping note taking. We had to go back, we, um, through our experience to the EA, EAP, uh, we had experience with mind mapping. Um, this proved to be incredibly useful again for them, show them how to do this and go back to very, uh, and also extremely organized note taking for summaries. Uh, every time they read something, they had to produce a summary on this. Uh, again, why one of the writing questions is what's called an integrated question in the, um, in the TOEFL, which involves listening. Okay, reading, and then you just summarize all the points and, and integrate, synthesize the points uh, together. 
Now, um, focus on summarizing effective linking. Go back again. Uh, in linking, incredibly important. Extended group discussions based on uh, course text. This is something that we hadn't really used before. I hadn't really used this before as intensively. But if there's something about a large class when you get 12 students from the same country together, they react differently. There's nobody there pussing, saying, no, I'm not interested in this. They were. And we divided them up into six and six groups. This worked incredibly well. Uh, you take your article, and then uh, we would say to them, okay, why is this important? Why is this important today? How will this be important in the future? Um, also, for example, uh, you know, as regards Brazil, how could this be adapted? How could this be brought back to Brazil? What could, where could you see this industry in Brazil in 5, 10, 15 years' time? And they worked away with that. And it was incredible. They, they could spend um, 20, half an hour, 45 minutes on this. We just let them run with it. And it was incredible. Once they were doing the enthusiasm that they were able to put into this was, was, was really incredible. Now, um, so bridging techniques connecting course topics to Brazil, Brazil's future. This was something we found incredibly useful. We had experience doing this before with the Chinese about seven, eight years ago. Uh, we used extensive uh, bridging techniques. And uh, again, we were able to apply that again, and it, it worked. And um, also then there was the, the CPD, the Co Continuous Professional Development Element, because it was okay for, uh, let's say, Gigi and myself coming in first. But we knew we were going to have more and more groups coming in. So we had to start training other teachers. Now, I was lucky because I came from a science background. I'm not from an arts background or a languages background. Okay, I'm actually a marine biologist. So I was able to, okay, the first time around, it was easier for me. In that sense, I was able to, okay, I knew where these guys were coming from. But we knew, okay, that we were going to have to try and extend this into other, other let's say, teachers who are not from the science field. So one of the major um, things that we had to do, well, basically, I had to do from January to, to March was, to set up a course, a day-by-day -day course where it was all laid out, all the materials, uh, in the sense that, and, and to plan out the situation that it would not be challenging for the new tutor, tutors coming in. It would be acceptable to the students, in a sense, but for the new teachers it would, uh, coming in on the course that they would be able to just transition from one, a general English class into a TOEFL class on a Monday morning and there would be no tears and everything would work. Now, it takes about a two-week transition, three-week transition, but it actually worked. Now, as uh, so reflections on this then, what's, what's it we learn from this? Um, at, now, I'm taking from, again, from Atlantic language and Bobby, what did we learn from, from this? Um, well, first of all, expect the unexpected. That's the, one of the things. I'm sure that's true for all, but definitely for us now. Uh, we've begun to notice that we're getting a lot of different courses in and with very short lead times on the courses. Um, be flexible and innovative. We have to be very flexible as regards to who's coming in. We have to be very innovative as, as to how we're actually, um, you know, using new techniques and, um, and it's definitely this TOEFL has shown us that really we have to, to work extremely hard and come up with very innovative solutions with, with new, new people coming in and new students coming in. But that's, I'm sure that's the same across, right across the board for everybody. And practical course design. It's okay being theoretical, but when you know your students are going to be sitting inside in a lecture, that focuses your mind. Incredibly. It's not, as I said before, not like a Cambridge exam where you hope students will be using this in the future. We know that this, they're going to be using this in a very short period of time. Uh, market requirements are placing different demands and all involved in the TEFL world. Um, like I think we, at the Atlantic Language Lab, we've sort of realized that we're going to be getting a lot more of these courses, uh, courses with very short lead times, intensive courses. Uh, one of the, one of the, the courses that's, in, that's, that's growing as well are the intensive FCs, intensive CAEs. Uh, for us as well. We put in a program of that as well. This, the word seems to be intensive. We have an intensive IELTS course coming on again in, in, a, in a week or two. So everything seems to be intensive these days and short term and then uh, new courses coming in. You don't even know that they're coming in. Now, um, so that's basically uh, the, the Atlantic TOEFL program. Now, uh, mm -hmm. it's okay talking about all these students, but what we're going to do, uh, well, apart from Vera, okay, I'm going to give you just a very short uh, video clip of some of the faces here. Uh, some of these people that I've been talking about. This was, uh, these were students from our first intake here. It's only short, it's only about a minute long now, uh, from our first intake. Um, and this was shot around the end of August, early September last year. Okay, so. visit and uh, a good university so 
Is we it, are having fun here. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice. They choose to come to Galway um, first to come to Ireland because it's a country really different from Brazil. The weather, the people, and I am feeling really welcome here. Um, I like the pubs that are really different from what we have in Brazil. And the university, the buildings are really different too. It's really old and beautiful. Um, and it's a smaller city uh, in contrast with the big city in which I live. So I love to walk to everywhere and people are really cool and they help us a lot and the city is really charming. I really enjoy this thing.